In the previous lesson, we learned how easy it is to set up the i1 Studio to make sure that we're getting accurate color and better results out of the paper that we're using. But X-Rite really kicks things up a notch in that it provides you a great way for you to get the best out of your black and white prints. On the surface, it would seem that there really shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it's just black and white, right? That's not necessarily the case. As it turns out, printing images on black and white can still introduce slight casts of color into the print. Little known fact, black and white prints actually are using color inks, not just the black and gray cartridges. Interesting, huh? Black and white printing is really about the amount of tonality that you can get out of an image, and you don't want anything getting in the way of that. Ideally, you would want a calibration that measures how well the printer does at replicating color, but also ensures that you get the most out of your shadows and highlight in black and white, essential for the best tone. Ideally, what we need here is a workflow that not only measures the color capabilities of the printer, but then also measures how the printer deals with neutral colors, grays, and blacks. The i1 Studio takes care of all of that, much in the same way that we created the color printer profile for a paper. Let's go through that process now. Like in the previous lesson, we'll use the Epson R3000 as the printer of choice for this job, and we'll be using the Ilford Gallery Smooth Pearl, or whichever black and white paper you prefer. We'll switch the dial to the 7 o'clock position to start a calibration. Once that's done, set it to the 6 o'clock position and you're ready to scan. The software will first start out by printing a series of color patches for you to use for calibration, just like it did in the color lesson. After letting them dry fully, we'll use the i1 Studio to measure what these patches look like by moving the device along the color lines and letting the i1 Studio record what it sees. We'll repeat this process for each strip of color for every reference sheet that is printed. This is where it differs from the color profile setups that you made. You'll now be prompted to print two additional sheets of reference patches. These patches are more neutral in tone and also provide a lot more grays and blacks to be measured. Repeat the scanning process so that we can get all of that data for the profile. The resulting profiles will be a combination of the color data as well as the data that is measured on how well your printer did in the neutral colors, grays, and blacks. There is also another point where the black and white profile can be quite useful. Instead of recording one individual profile, you have the option to create a number of different profiles that are based on this black and white calibration. For example, if you have a color image and you would like to have the i1 Studio profile converted to a black and white, you can select the standard profile and create an ICC profile for it. If you would like these color images to automatically be converted to cold tones, high contrast, or sepia, you can create these style profiles right from inside of this dialog box. Finally, if you've already created a black and white image inside of Lightroom and just want to make sure that you get the very best out of it, you can just select the None option and make a profile for that. These type of profiles are called styles, and they let you express yourself to the fullest capacity of the printer and the paper. My only suggestion here is that you make sure that you have the name of the style that you're using into the ICC profile. You don't want to confuse that later on. Let's make some sample prints right from inside of Lightroom. We'll select the color image and select the default profile, letting the printer convert the color image to black and white using the ICC profile that we made. And here's the result. Let's try out the other profiles and see how they look. Finally, let's take an image that we have already converted and see how well it prints using our black and white profile. Perfect. From the screen to the print, you've already learned the foundations of color management and it's taken you no time at all. Feel free to go through a refresher on any of these lessons on the site, as well as check out our next lesson that takes you a little deeper into how you can apply what you've learned to really see how much you can get out of the i1 Studio. If you want to learn more, make sure you visit xrayphoto.com. My name's RC. Thanks for watching.